My guest today is Dan Ray. Dan, how are you? Great. How are you, David? I'm doing great. What do you do? I am a resource at Brainstorm, and Brainstorm is a company focused on productivity and end-user computing. I think you're more than a resource. <laughs> I'm a lead trainer is my lead title. Trainer. So you, you <laughs> learn lots of really cool stuff, and then you share it with other people. I do. I do. What kind of things have you been learning lately? I've been working on Windows 10, mm -hmm. Power BI, the Office 365 stack, Microsoft Flow, Forms, a bunch of wow. different things. Uh, Windows 10 is an interesting thing because it's old and it's new, right? Yeah. When, when was Windows yeah. 10 first released? Windows 10 came out in, it was finalized in July of 2015. Uh -huh. So it's been at least Over three, three years. years. Yeah, uh, but it's still it's it's still coming out. Yeah, what's yeah. up with that? That's that's really strange. So that's this, a different model than Microsoft yeah. had in the past. Yeah, this uh, fall there will be a release called the Windows 10 October 2018 update. Okay, that mouthful. All right, but it's uh, referred to in its beta as Redstone 5 or the fifth release of a beta product that will eventually become a production version of Windows 10. Oh, cool. So it's actually gone through quite a few iterations within those three years as opposed to the big bang that used to happen every two to three years. Yeah, that's uh, how, how frequently is uh, Windows released these days? These days, it's every six months. Wow. And you can get in programs that allow you to look at it ahead of time, and that's referred to as the Windows Insiders. Okay, and that's what you're doing. You're, you know, yes. That way you know ahead of time, yes. so you can teach it and you're ready to... Yep. Let people know about it. Um, yep. So what, what's going on with Windows 10? What's the What new features can people look forward to? That's a great question. There's uh, one that I really like, and it impacts you as an end user. There is the idea of a cloud clipboard, and a instead of using Control V to do paste, yeah. you can do Windows Key V and get to this cloud-based clipboard that will synchronize potentially more than just the last thing that you clipped or that you want to copy and paste somewhere, okay. um, but also synchronize across your devices. So imagine if you were at home on your Windows device, you took something into the clipboard and then you were at work when you wanted to use that. Windows Key V would give you that access to oh cloud-based clips. Copy on one copy. machine, paste on another machine. Yes. Yes. Oh, that's interesting. I could use and that. And I think actually. that's coming out in the next version, the skip ahead, which is looking at previews of what's happening in uh, spring of uh, 2019. Interesting. I'll I, have you to know, look I, if I it's actually in have a, a Redstone 5 that. or that next one. I, I have a use case <laughs> for that right away. I, I, cool. I, I have a blog, and a lot of times I want to do post some you know technical how-to step-by-step yeah. article. It's a common thing on my blog with a bunch of screenshots. And I only have Visual Studio on one of my computers, and I have another computer, which is just a nicer computer, and it has a nicer chair. It's easier to work at. <laughs> and so sometimes I take screenshots on one. It's nice to be able to paste them into something else, somewhere else. And that, yeah. uh, That's a perfect I, use case for In the for past, it. what I've done is I've copied them to a shared folder or a Dropbox and, <laughs> yep. and yep. brought it. It was a bit clumsy. Yep. Uh, this should nice. solve that. Excellent. Uh, what else is coming? There's uh, also the demise of the snipping tool. What? So the snipping tool is going to go away. Is it going to be replaced? I was very upset until I realized that it's going to be replaced with something they originally called Screen Sketch, uh -huh. and they're now calling Snip and Sketch. Okay. So the idea is the same thing that you did with the snipping tool, you'll do with this new Snip and Sketch tool. And the only thing I haven't seen but I understand is coming is the delay feature that they introduced in the snipping tool. Right. So if you're ever doing code snippets or yeah. screenshots and you want like a right click, yep. you can get that by using this delay function. That was in the snipping tool in Windows 10, and it's coming to the snip and sketch tool. What, what do, is there something better about the snip and sketch tool than the snipping tool? It also supports uh, pen and is kind of optimized for touch. Okay. type devices or type uses, okay. but it still works pretty much the same way the snipping tool does. The snipping okay. tool at this point is still there, but it has a prominent message about it's going to go away and you should use and try this new tool. I should be reading those messages more closely. <laughs> I, uh, I just used it a couple of, again, for my blog, same thing. Uh, uh, what else? And uh, there's a focused assist feature that I like a lot. Hmm. If you've ever noticed in Windows 10, the action center and the notifications can come up about getting new emails or getting yeah. different areas of the operating system messages on your screen. 
Focus Assist allows you to basically control and block those types of messages, even things like Outlook pop-ups of new mail, mm -hmm. for maybe a period of time. If you're working on your blog okay. and you don't want to be interrupted with my messages and, and something that's not urgent, you can say, I need Focus for like two or three hours. Oh, okay. And if I'm maybe an um, immediate team member or your manager, I could be set up as like the priority that still breaks through that focus assist because if your manager calls or you know sends you a, a message, sure. you might want to be immediately maybe, maybe your notified wife you want to that. to that as well. Exactly. I uh, that sounds like uh, a little bit like presentation mode with a little bit yeah. more control. Is yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, that's a good way to think of it. Okay. And it's in the action center, so you'll find it in the action center, which is either swiping in from the right, and then it'll be one of the items at the bottom, or um, you can use the uh, icon in the lower right-hand corner. It sounds like you're a touch guy. That. I'm gathering that from yes, the fact that you're using yes, your hands yes. to describe this. We've got a lot of touch machines. <laughs> okay. Uh, anything else cool coming? What else is coming? Um, there are some other features that will allow you to pair your Android phone at this point with Windows 10 hmm. and actually share things from there. So I've been carrying Android as my primary phone, and I've switched to Apple devices for some of the tablets. So I've got all three of those hardware manufacturers right. in my uh, in my personal devices. Yeah, it's, it's a challenge to integrate yep. those for sure. Yeah, but what they're doing now is the my phone or your phone app allows you to have pictures synchronized that you take from your phone. So instead of having to, maybe for your blog, you're using a picture of something, maybe the device itself as opposed to a screenshot of the device, okay. and you want to integrate that into a blog post, it immediately synchronizes to your computer so okay. that the recent pictures are there. Well, that's wirelessly. interesting. So, so Google and Apple already have synchronization tools with uh, was it iCloud and Google Cloud, I think yeah. they're calling. Yeah. Is this, does this replace that? It doesn't replace that. It's a it's a different um, different way of pairing that okay. and having it go directly from your phone to the computer. I don't think it makes a stop or a trip to OneDrive by default. Okay. But OneDrive is Microsoft's version of that cloud right, storage. Right. Exactly. Uh, file synchronization. Too, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that would be the other option is if your phone already synchronized with OneDrive mm -hmm. for business or for personal use, you could also get to your files that way. Hmm. pictures or or otherwise okay so i wouldn't have to install uh is it is it google cloud what are the what does google use i've forgotten for uh for android synchronization <laughs> apparently i'm trying to using, remember what yeah uh, you're not using, I, using I think it's google stuff, drive something like that uh and I'm, i just recently switched to iphone okay and so icloud is the synchronization tool for that yep. let's talk a little bit about the upgrade cadence uh now every six months now is uh, you know you as a former Microsoft guy, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a long time former Microsoft guy, you uh, you remember the days when we would wait three years and then Microsoft would sort of announce, sort of drop on us these huge new features, new versions of Windows and Office and Visual Studio, and what what changed? Why is that different? Yeah, so th this is allowing Microsoft to be much more agile in the features that they're bringing to the operating system and not wait those three years for something that maybe users are really requesting. There's the whole idea of um, user voice, which is crowdsourcing the types of features that people want most. Okay. So if there's a feature that's either missing or that you'd like improved or that worked differently in the past, you can actually upvote those types of things or suggest new ideas to Microsoft. That's and then Microsoft user can voice work on com, right? Yeah, I believe so. Um, if you search for Windows and user voice, mm -hmm. you'll find the Windows specific feedback for that. And then um, through the Windows Insiders, which we mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. you can sign up for free, either using a work or a personal account, to get access to these early builds. Every six months they're working on them. They most recently announced that the builds will be in the uh, fall time frame, supported for 30 months, and uh, for business users. Okay. So enterprise, education, and I believe pro falls right. into that. And then in the spring, there will be another six month update, but that will be kind of um, new features coming in and the businesses will focus on that fall release as maybe what they're wanting to put out to the masses as opposed to testing so maybe with controlled the fall groups. releases is the big release, lots yeah. of new features, yeah. smaller incremental one in yeah. the spring, maybe a yep. few bug fixes in there yep. as well. 
So uh, even over those three years, they've made tweaks and modifications to that six-month cadence and what happens each six months. Yeah. Well, um, where is that every, is it Wednesday morning, I think, when suddenly all the patches come down? There's a patch the, Tuesday. Tuesday morning, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. Uh, that's been going on for a long time. Yeah, and I think that was this week. Okay. I think patch <laughs> Tuesday was this Tuesday. Uh, so we, is, if I'm a user of Windows 10 today, how do I get the update in the fall? That's a great question. Depending on what version you have, if it's for work, your IT or your your um, company decides when that new version pushes out mm -hmm. and gets installed. And Microsoft has been doing a lot of education for IT professionals mm -hmm. on how to prepare for that, how to plan for that, and how to roll that out. Windows Insider Through is part of that. Through companies like Brainstorm sometimes. Through companies like Brainstorm. And um, the other thing they have is Project Olympia. And what Project Olympia is, is similar to the Windows Insiders that just gets you early access. Project Olympia is a full IT um, infrastructure behind what you can do with the operating system. So as opposed to having to have Azure Active Directory at your disposal if you're an IT pro or you want to do some of this testing, Project Olympia by installing or, or signing up for that, you can actually put your device into an Azure Active Directory that exists at olympia.windows.com. So hmm. you have a user account, mine's Dan Ray okay. at olympia.windows.com, and I can put my computer into that environment. Well, does that mean that my home computer, which is not managed by a business, uh, will only get this update if I go to this Olympia site? Yeah, the, back to the question about how do you get it. If you're a home user as opposed to a business user, it should just come to your computer. Oh, okay, so Microsoft everything you talked on, about so far yes. was just for business users. Yes, okay. yeah. good clarification so, point. So home users, uh, it'll just pop up and say a new upgrade is available yep. and do you want to install, or will it just do it? Yeah, there, that, there are happened ways. happened to me where it just suddenly. There are ways <laughs> now, and Microsoft has done uh, this type of change based on feedback. There are ways now, even for home users, to kind of control that experience when okay. the reboot happens, when the preparation of downloading the files happens, right. because the download takes a long time. Right. And then the install theoretically shouldn't take that long once it's all downloaded, but you want to control that, like you said. Yeah, especially that reboot part, yes. which can be yes. frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> we feel your pain. <laughs> uh, is there anything we haven't talked about that we should have? That's a that's probably about it for Windows 10 right now. Okay. There is uh, OneDrive for business uh -huh. and files on demand. So if you want cloud-based storage, which we talked about a little bit, maybe between types of devices that you work with, whether they're all Windows 10 or whether some of those are Macs or Android, iOS mm -hmm. devices, OneDrive for Business and OneDrive Personal can actually synchronize to those different types of platforms. Okay. Is that new? The um, I've been using OneDrive for, gosh, at least five years, maybe 10. Uh, is it new that it's... Um uh, syncs with Macs and uh, Chromebooks. And I think Android's some of that, that. Yeah, I think some of that, that is that fairly new. The okay. the Mac client doesn't do the files on demand yet. Okay. What files on demand does? If you imagine that I've got that one terabyte of storage minimum at uh, OneDrive mm -hmm. for business, and I've got a device like a Surface Book or you know another type of endpoint. I probably don't have a terabyte of information or storage on that local computer. Oh, yeah. Files on demand controls how those files synchronize down. So it only puts the files on when you use them or need them. Okay. And then you can say maybe this is a file that I'm going to need offline. So you can tell it to always keep either files or folders offline okay. available. And that's on Windows 10. The Mac version just synchronizes based on what you tell it to from a structure. I see. All right. Well, Dan, thank you so much for thank taking you. the time to talk with us. Appreciate it. Many of my friends get together on Wednesdays for Windows Insiders Meetup. We meet online and wherever I find myself physically, and we talk about technology and Windows.